Alexandra and Lawrence. Yeah, thank you, Yuji. Thanks a lot for having us here. And um, yeah, it's a pleasure to be here in the assembly of solar punk placemaking. Um, just a quick introduction as to how this workshop is going to flow. We're going to take about 30 minutes to present the idea of the Regenesence. Um, and then we'll move over to a question and answer session, followed by a game so that we can actually put this adult play into practice. Um, yeah. So without much further ado, we're gonna we're gonna get going and um, lay out the Regenesis for you. So we were invited to speak on in the assembly of solar punk placemaking. And around solar punk, uh, I have the following associations, which are solar punks. We are solar punks because the only other options are denial or despair. I've heard solar punk being described as a movement that wants to go beyond denial and despair, and I find it interesting as it moves beyond denial, game denial and game acceptance. And it suggests that there's a real care about this planet and the bodies that inhabit this planet. And just to set the tone a little bit, I found this quote, which is, even after all this time, the sun never says to the earth, you owe me. Look at what happens with a love like that. By Hafiz. So solar punks care, and um, there seems to be, at least in our Western culture, the need to link ideas to actual embodied movement to breathe breath into ideas that we have and to make them reality. And so the question is, how can we, how can we give this idea of solar punkness enough breath and enough momentum to happen and to be placed on earth? Placemaking can be seen from very different points of view. Placemaking can be seen from the view of we are objects in the world and we see fixed objects and we can control these, or it can be seen as a constant co-evolution with space, as an awareness of our own selves, as constantly evolving in exchange with our environment. Passing it over to you. Solar punk place making. Making the place solar. So summoning down this solar energy into where we're living so that it may nourish us. So all may be nourished by the abundance of the sun. There's more than enough energy there's, there's more than enough abundance, but the way that it circulates throughout the place, the way that it gets trapped in certain places, uh, depriving others of the nourishment of the sun, that is where we're uh, lacking the metabolism. Uh, there's a need for, uh, we could call, as they say in placemaking, urban acupuncture. You could call it solar acupuncture. This need to pinpoint attention into a specific place and to use the light of attention, which recognizes what really is there, which recognizes the dirty, the ugly, the, the, the damaged, the wounded, but, but leans into that, leans into that with the fullness of the attention, 
with the intention of releasing that blocked potential. So solar punk. Solar punk is uh, it's very important to uh, have this positive connection to the sun. But the sun is not the only astral body that we should pay attention to. So, for example, there's also the moon, there's also lunar punk. Uh, and we've got to make sure that we don't fall into the trap of the monoculture of the sun. That we need this balance, we need this balance with the moon as well, with a different rhythm, a different set of phases. Is it freezing only for me? Coming into sync with that as well. And you've got solar punk, so only element. There's also earth, there's also air, there's also water. So there's a need for a solar punk of summoning the the power. Oh, can, can you hear me? Yeah, you just broke up for a minute, but um, yeah. Hello? Yeah. So your image is frozen for me still, and you were, you broke up for a minute, so maybe. Yeah. All right, I'll just take over as we wait for screen. Oh, there he is. Hey, am I back? Yeah. Oh. So I think it's your turn, Alex. Yeah, so solar punk can be enriched by, by earth punk and by lunar punk and all of these different energies that are on this planet and um it can also be enriched by a metamodern code in the sense that metamodernism is actually quite aligned with solar punk in the, in the terms of basically seeing the dark and the light and making a protosynthesis out of this, like refusing to stop at the perspective that two opposing views need to be opposing, that they aren't actually opposing, and that there is a synthesis to be made viewed from a different perspective. You can have accepting both perspectives lead to a whole new perspective. And so metamodernism is a cousin of solar punk. Metamodernism, however, maybe slightly different to solar punk in the sense that it realizes or it emphasizes the importance of inner inner solar punkation so really looking at um how how can we actually shine the light on our inner worlds and not just pretend like there was only the manifest world but seeing how closely inner and outer worlds are related and seeing how the level of complexity with which we look at the collapse, at the issues we see in the world today does matter because it sets up different possibilities and the more different perspectives we can integrate, the more chances we have of finding an adequate response. Really, metamodernism is about realizing that there's huge synergy to be found in bringing people with different focuses together such as the hackers, the hackers with the hippies, the hippies with the, with the hipsters, and then the hermits are important too. And all of these different ways of viewing the world that have different weightings in inner and outer and in individual or collective, these people need to meet. These people need to join forces and realize that they each hold an important part of the truth and 
that with with interlinking the ways of viewing the world with accepting that everything is true and partial and a greater level of truth can be reached if you synthesize these partial truths if you really recognize that beyond the postmodern critique there is actually uh, a desire and daring to speak that desire daring to speak what we wish for and constructing together with others once we've picked things apart. So metamodernism is an important aspect and is bridging for us the solar punk with the Renaissance. It's what connects for us and creates the link between the assembly we've been invited into and the work that we are giving our attention to with the Renaissance. Passing it over to you. Metamodernism. Metamodernism tries to integrate as many different perspectives as possible and giving the attention necessary to nourish all of those perspectives. What does that mean in practice? It means, for example, integrating perspectives of all different levels of complexity all different levels of code, all different levels of depth, uh, all different ages of the population, the, the children, the adults, the elders, and finding ways to bring all of these people together in ways that they can play together, in ways that they can have interactions that bring them to see each other, that make them present to each other, that allow them to see each other face to face, eye to eye in the present moment, rather than all the projections that we have of who the other is. By getting them to play together and be present together, they can finally see each other how they really are. So here we see the quadruple H diagram and these are the four parts of the population who have the sufficient level of complexity and depth to potentially hold the future, to be the vessel for the future. So the future is becoming more and more complex and is deepening as we move forward, as we learn more and more about ourselves. And as the challenge increases, It's terrifying. It's monstrous. Practices. There's a need for people to develop themselves as much as possible in that depth. And the four, the hermetics, the hippies, the hipsters, and the hackers. The hipsters concentrate on the code of cultural transformation and the hackers on the complexity. Can you hear me? Am I dropping out again? You just broke off a few times. Maybe you want to put off your video. So if you if you could just pick up again from the point where you were saying how they need uh, practices, these different people. Um, different practices to develop themselves so that they can hold this complexity, hold this depth of the challenge, which is which we're already facing and that we need to continue to face and not look away from, which is always the temptation. But finding that balance to not be not be burnt by the, the this immense shadow of the black sun which we're confronted with. Uh, 
but being able to stare it in the face so we can metabolize it. It's only by giving attention to this collective shadow that we're going to be able to heal it. So in, in metamodernism, they speak of the always being in a state of protosynthesis, of coming to some conclusions, to coming to some points where we can move forward, where we can make the next move and, and do that. Look for that plus one of development. So this photosynthesis bridges beautifully to the photosynthesis of solar punk and this metabolism of energy, this metabolism of attention, which is at the core of the regenescence. Over to you, Anne. All right. So the regenesis is a potential era from 2020 to 2030, where there is a series of games where people realize we need a way to synchronize all of these different great and powerful ideas and people and practices together around a central axis an axis um, that will relink and resynchronize the metabolism of the collective. And one of the things that sort of really defines the Regenesis from, from this perspective is that it's realizing that freedom is not so much freedom for self, but it's freedom for self and freedom from self. And it's this integration of realizing that both the individual and the collective are important and require each other. And one needs the other to exist. And it's breaking this unending loop of saying, is it the collective or is it the individual? And it's saying, just because we are adults doesn't mean we need to stop playing. We need to re-enter this, this flow that we find through play and really look at what makes us come alive and what makes us really truly able to give, give from a place of regeneration towards a place of regenesis. It's the using of, of freedoms won through the information explosion for the sake of regenerating the planet and it's realizing that no individual can truly do that like we need to we need to link forces to do so and above all we need to learn to go through different rhythms we need to um we need to find a way to come and sync once again go beyond anthropocentrism and learn learn to learn from our environment learn to co-evolve with our environment and this regenesis will happen in a mere 10 years. Why 10 years? Because people are, are able to do amazing things once they have to. And 10 years is this amount of time, which is enough time to infiltrate, to seep into the individual minds and connect the individual minds into an intermind. And this will happen through play. Passing it on to you. The Regenescence is the potential cultural era from 2020 to 2030. If we make the right moves, if we start playing the right games, there is the potential that we will avoid the degeneration of the planet, the collapse of the planet. And instead, we will collectively generate a regeneration, where by the end of 2030, we are set on a path 
which leads us on an upward spiral rather than a downward spiral. This all depends on us. It all depends on the moves we make in every moment. But crucially, it depends on the ways that we can organize ourselves collectively. How can we all come together? How can we all play the same game? Right now, there are hundreds of move movements all around the world, all trying to do the same thing. But what we're lacking is a collective narrative, a narrative that we can all get behind. And this narrative is the Regenesis. And that which helps the Regenesis to be born is the turn, the metamodern burn. What happens in a turn? In a turn, people, the hipsters, the hackers, the hippies, the hermits, they all come together and from their unique vantage point, they share their knowledge, they share their soul, they share that which brings them alive for the sake of building and seeking ways that can regenerate society. So the turn is, is like a burn, except that it happens in the middle of cities and it can happen at different scales. So the smallest form of a turn might just happen in your neighborhood and, and what will happen, and it can take the, the scale of even just a day or an afternoon. But what is at, at the, the blueprint of every turn is the rhythms of the seeking, finding what are the questions that need to be asked right now, taking time to really pose the questions that are truly wanting to be asked, and then moving to the code, which is all about finding the language together that can encapsulate as much as possible of the questions that need to be asked, the attention that is required. Then comes the build. And in the build, it's all about manifesting through this language and this shared into mind, the thing, the constructions and the outside world that can let the true questions be addressed, that can let the constant dialogue with reality unfold in the way that is required in that particular location. And once the build has happened, then comes the tend. And in the tend, it's all about caring. And here we come back to the caring of solar punk. Remember, solar punks are solar punks because otherwise they would have to despair or deny or deny what is truth. And so this tending is really about seeing that we can never really know all of the truth, but we have this cycle going so that as we approach the truth, as we connect with reality, we take time also to pause. We take time to see what have we learned from this action in the outer world, and we take time to tend to the social soil. Over to you. What is the turn? The turn is a self-organized festival that intends to regenerate the gift economy and the commons. It's the, the celebration of gifts and games. We have the seek, the code, the build and the tend. So these are all different games that one plays in the playground of one's locality. But concretely, what does that mean? It means that if you want to regenerate the commons where you live, first of all, you seek, you find the others. 
So you map out who are the stakeholders in your location. Who are the people who are already participating in the commons, but are lacking the interconnections between each other. And then you move on to the code. And in the code, that's where you constitute the commons. That's where you come together and you form uh, some kind of a, a clear understanding of the different roles that the different stakeholders can, can play in this new organization of the commons. And in the build, you build the guilds. So what does this mean? If you look at the document which is posted in the chat, you'll see that as represented on the slide here, you've got these different guilds that represent different parts of the game. And th they work as organizing bodies which are non-political, but which are participating in this gift economy in this commons regenerative process and each guild has its own specific focus so for example the Harak Noya is the guild of the hackers it's the guild of hackers coming together to facilitate civic tech to um, defend uh, our internet, so internet democracy, uh, defending our networks, uh, protect us from the, the dangers of data collection, of protecting us against corporations and government and their potential abuses, of helping us transition into this hyper technological era on the which we are already on the cusp but which is only going to accelerate and these guilds serve as containers for all the different players but not only for the quadruple h population but also for bringing as many different people on board as possible from as many different backgrounds. The quadruple H population serving as stewards, as helping to organize people, but getting as many different people engaged with this process of reforming the commons. So how to get people on board? Well, that's where the center of the turn comes in and where you see the little circus tent is where you have the feast and the feast is one of the main attraction points and it's one of the foundations of the gift economy it's the gift of food it's sharing food out in your locality in front of your house or in the park a key place to organize the public space and sharing what you have cooked in a potluck and just giving that surplus, giving that abundance in that simple act of sharing food. And that's, that serves as an, a, an attractor point. It serves as, an, as an, the easiest entry point into this larger process into this larger movement of, of sharing. And it begins with food, but then it can move on to other things. It can be uh, the, the sharing of any form of surplus, be it skills, uh, be it your time, be it your, your energy, be it toys, and be it games. And as you can see in the, in the document, it describes various games that help to regenerate the connections in between people, which is at the essence of all of this. Before we can get political, we have to get pro-political. 
So pro-politics is the work of the polis which comes before actual politics. It's rebuilding the social glue in between people so that they may connect, that they may see each other eye to eye, respect each other. And through these different games, we build this foundation through these different gifts. We rebuild that foundation. Over to you, Alex. Yeah. And so the turn in its essence is really about taking time to overcome internalized structures of mistrust and hoarding. Um, it's practicing the economy of the gift turn by turn. That can be a day in your neighborhood. It can be a week in the city of Berlin in spring. It can be at some point, if enough players show up, it can be synchronized games across the globe for different lengths of times, but at least a sort of quarterly turn would be ideal because it, it recognizes that for true generation to happen, it's necessary to unlearn and rebuild step by step with humility and yet with the desire to make a change. And so just before we move into q and I want to just invite a couple of moments um, to let Lawrence speak to the ideas of how this turn, like what are elements of the territory that could be, um, yeah, in Berlin, that could be useful in setting up a first turn in Berlin as a metamodern playground. Berlin is the place in the world which has one of the greatest potentials for regeneration. There's a deep history of recent historical trauma, which has begun a process of healing as the wall fell and began a process of reintegration. There's a large population of very developed, deep, complex thinkers, artists, hackers, healers, who have the potential if they can all be brought into ways of playing together to collectively regenerate Berlin, to generate deep, deep change. There's a strong culture of the neighborhood in the form of the Keatses, where there are a lot of Keatses who are already performing some of these regenerative tasks. So for example, one game in the turn is as part of the tent, it's trash tag. So trash tag, some of you might have seen on Instagram, you would have these posting how many kilos of trash people have picked up uh, when they cleaned up the local river or the local park and just using a little hashtag. Well, there are Keatses in Berlin who are already doing this. They're already organizing these kind of events. But the idea with the turn is that you organize it simultaneously in all of the Keatses in Berlin. So there's this collective energy which is building up. And then when you take the turn to higher levels, you have all the Keatses in Berlin who are playing trash tag. But then 
you also have Hamburg, you have Köln, you have Leipzig, who are all also performing, playing trash tag at the same time. So there's this connection, there's this synchronization in between the different players, even though that they cannot be in direct proximity with one another, they can still feel that they are synchronized. And this is something which is crucial for the generation of planetary consciousness, is how do we get people to feel like they are part of one unity when they are so far apart? Well, when you can't do it in presence, the only way to do it is in spirit. And the way to do it in spirit is to synchronize one's actions. Another great potential in Berlin is when they are so far. Right now, there is a unique opportunity to reclaim the energy network. So in October of 2020, the contract of the ownership of the energy network in Berlin expired and it's now being returned to the land of Berlin and there is a energy democracy organization in Berlin who have already collected 11 million euros to bid on the energy network and that would mean energy sovereignty for Berlin which would be huge, which would be a beacon to the rest of the world of showing what is possible. And Berlin has been doing that in many ways for a long time. The cutting edge of culture, the rent freeze, unprecedented in a European capital. And there's also a strong solar punk movement in Berlin. There's, uh, there was the solar punk festival in 2018. There is a, a solar punk club at CCC. So all the elements are already there for um, the, the players are ready to play. Now we just need to organize the energies and make Berlin into a beacon of the future. What can the future look like? Well, let's manifest it here in Berlin. Let's solar punkify Berlin. Let's transform the place of Berlin. Every little corner, every park, every neighborhood, every river. Let's clean up Berlin. Let's build up the commons by interconnecting all of the different stakeholders. Let's develop energy democracy, solar power, planting new trees, greening the city. And the turn is the methodology to do that. It brings the, the power of play and the power of the gift, the power of games. To resource a tired, overwhelmed population, to breathe new life into them, to shine a new light. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah.